All right, today I want to take a look at the total force acting on a dam by the water which is stacked up behind it. And you'll see I've drawn here the face of this dam as well as a section view of the dam so we can see the water behind the dam. Now typically when working this dam problem, what people will do is use a rectangular dam because it simplifies the math a bit. Uh, but you'll see, we're able to work around that issue and I'll show you how in a little bit. Now in order to find the total force, the first thing we're gonna need to do is look at the pressure on the dam. And to do that, we're gonna take a look at Bernoulli's law. And we're gonna apply Bernoulli's law to two points on the fluid acting against the dam. The first point being the surface of the water. The second being at some height h above the base of the dam. Now there's three terms in Bernoulli's law and the first thing I wanna point out is that this dynamic pressure or this velocity dependent pressure is non-existent in this situation because for both the water at the surface as well as the water stacked up behind the dam, nothing's moving. So we see the velocity terms cancel out. Now looking at the static pressure, it's tempting to say that there is no pressure on the fluid right here at the surface of the dam, but that's in fact not true. Realize there's atmospheric pressure acting downward on this liquid. Now the atmospheric pressure may seem small relative to the pressures which are going to form due to the water stacked up behind this dam. Realize we do need to account for this. Now that being said, later on we're going to find out that the atmospheric pressure actually cancels out because there's also atmospheric pressure acting against the face of this dam. So up here in Bernoulli's law, our first term is going to be the atmospheric pressure. Now the next term is the hydrostatic pressure, which is the density of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. Now the height can be measured relative to wherever we choose to be a reference height of zero. In this problem, I'm gonna say this lowest point is a height of zero. So up here at the surface of the fluid, the height is gonna be 15 meters. Now on the other side of Bernoulli's law, we're gonna have some pressure P. That's gonna be the static pressure acting against this wet dam face plus rho g h, where h is whatever height we choose to look at. Now in rearranging this equation a little bit, we come up with an expression for the total pressure against this wet face of the dam. Now you remember earlier I pointed out that this atmospheric pressure was gonna cancel itself out. And that's because the atmospheric pressure on this dry side of the dam is pushing in the opposite direction of this pressure on the wet side of the dam which ultimately means that atmospheric pressure cancels itself out. So now we have an expression for the pressure exclusively by the water against this dam face. Now plugging in our values for density and gravity into this function, we get an expression for the pressure by the water as a function of the height above our reference height. And really all this is saying is as we move down the dam face, the pressure by the water is increasing. Now we're at the point where we have to be a little bit careful. See, it's tempting to take this function for pressure and try to apply it to this entire dam face universally. Uh, the issue being this dam tapers as we move towards the bottom of the dam. And as a result, we have to be a bit careful in how we calculate the force by the water on each section of the dam. So what we're gonna do is slice this dam into infinitely thin slices. So we're gonna say each slice has some thickness dh. That is, to put it in calculus terms, an infinitely small change in the total height. And the reason behind that is because force is given by pressure multiplied by area. Now if we can look entirely at a single height, we can apply a single value for pressure to the area of that slice of the dam at some particular height. Now even though the slice of the dam is infinitely thin, it still has some area. That area is given by the width of this slice multiplied by its height. Now this is where this problem can become a little bit contrived in that we need a function for the width of the dam. Now it might not be obvious, but the function for the width of this dam is given by 20 plus h. So combining our terms for width, area, and pressure together, we can come up with the force on this slice of the dam. 
Now realize this term is not the total force acting on the entire dam, it's just the force acting on a single slice. I don't want to call it the total force, I want to call it an infinitely small chunk of the total force. So now if we want to find the total force against the entire dam face, what we need to do is add up all the forces on every slice of dam from a height of 0 to a height of 15. And we find the total force against the entire dam face is 2.65 times 10 to the 7th newtons. So this has been how to solve for the total force acting against a non-uniform dam. And on that note, that's all for now.